your audience. So, understanding your first episode, and this is so key because this is what kills so many shows, my own included. Understand your first episode is going to suck. It will. Accept it and understand that that's okay. Because it's your first time, especially if it's your first time ever putting together a video, like using editing software or something like that, there's going to be things that you're not going to catch the first time around. And it's okay. Because as, if you think your topic is good, keep going. Um, understand if you go days before anyone sees it. Um, that was the case with me. Um, it was... Actually, how long was it? Do you remember how long, how many months it took before the show actually took off? It took a couple months. Do I? It took about two months before my show even got off the ground, and you have to, you have to be patient with it. Understand people will be more overly critical of this episode than any other episode you make. And I still think that's true. Because it's going to be, it's, it's, a, it's a first impression. And those are always important. Um, so it's, it's finding that good balance between understanding that your first episode is not going to be your best, it's probably going to be the worst you ever do, and at the same time making sure that it's good enough that people would still enjoy it. So, uh, understand you should expect insults and plenty of them. Oh man, <laughs> this one was bad because um, the first comment I ever received from my show was, and I quote, White pig, go back to America, baka gadget. I'm like, wow, you could have just disliked it and moved on, you just had to go there, didn't you? I didn't, I didn't know who that was or, or, or anything like that, but you, can't, you cannot let that get you down. Because I'm still going through weeaboo jokes. I'm still going through people saying, you're not funny, or quit talking about Japan, go to other countries, even though I've already said, I'm going to other countries. I'm going to Germany, Russia, all over South America. I want to cover different countries. Expect insults, because they're, they're going to be there. YouTube commenters are... YouTube is nothing but trolls. <laughs> I don't... But they're trolls. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. I don't want to say that because this is going up on YouTube soon. Um, we all need We love you, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> we love your faces. But I mean, you know, not everyone's like that. The problem is the trolls are louder than the constructive criticism. And you, you, have to, you have to watch that. Now, if people go absolutely crazy, like they start getting either way too personal or way too racist or whatever, just shut them down. You can, you can lock people out of YouTube accounts and whatnot. Um, for me, there was one troll, and I'll say this on camera, and I hope he's watching. There was one guy who just sat there and it was just racist weeaboo joke over and over and over, talking about how terrible my show was, etc, etc. And when you know that someone's being overly critical of your show, this is what I did. I went to my community and I copied and pasted the, uh, the URL, or no, I just flat out embedded it in my channel in this other community. And so I'm like, here's a spotlight to this troll. Y'all have fun. Because your viewers will ostracize your trolls for you. And it's, it's a beautiful thing. So, after the first episode, don't ever stop. Don't quit. Don't quit no matter how bad your first episode was. If you personally believe that your show's got potential, keep going. Because that's what happened with me. I came that close to quitting my show, but there were just a handful of people that said, we really like what you're talking about, we want more. And so I told myself, if I can reach just 100 people, or even just 50 people, it would be worth it. And at this point, I'm reaching thousands of people. So don't ever stop. Listen to your audience, ignore stupid people, be creative and intelligent in dealing with your trolls. As I just said, I put a big spotlight on my troll, and I didn't have to do anything, because he got, ripped, he got ripped apart on YouTube, and it was just glorious. Um, you must give his brain caps. Do what? You must give his brain caps, because it sounds glorious. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can give you the URL to the, to the to the troll, to the troll's video. And all he did was just straight up stream, my, he, he ripped my video from YouTube and reposted it. So I could have shut, I, I could have shut him down completely because of copyright issues, because all he did was add YouTube annotations. And they weren't even that good. So I was like, you're not even trying, like I'm disappointed in you. <laughs> um, but listen to constructive criticism, because nine times out of 10 it's really helpful for me. If you've ever seen my show, or if you came yesterday to my show, um, you probably noticed the voice pitch changed dramatically over like the 10 episodes I had. It's because I had a hard time finding a balance between 
maintaining the Goomba character, because my voice does not sound good coming out of a small creature, um, but still making it comfortable enough for people to enjoy it. So I listened very, very closely. I even did a poll at one point, and it was 50-50. Um, but listen, listen to your, listen to your fans. Um, respond to your fans, and I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Communicate with your audience. Give comments back. Um, for people that just put up a, a video on YouTube and they never respond back to any of the comments, unless you're stupid popular, this is going to be a death note. Like, people are going to just think you don't care about what they have to say. Uh, at the very beginning, I responded to every single comment I ever got, and I had time for that. <laughs> Uh, nowadays, I have to be a little, a little more picky and choosy about the comments that I deal with. But at, the, at least in the very beginning, talk to everyone because that lets them know you care. Never lose sight of what you originally wanted to do. Change a little bit, but never replace. For me, I've had so many people say, we want you in front of a camera with your normal, normal voice and none of this stupid voice whining crap. That was never how I wanted the show to be. Um, and that's never going to change. So for anyone watching on YouTube, that's never going to change. Um, I changed and modified. I modified the voice. I made it clearer, made it better. I made it look visually better. Uh, I actually had a graphic, a graphic designer go in and actually give me a set cast design. So change, but never replace. So finding a community. Um, for me, my community was screwattack.com. Um, I've got some minor problems with the just like the site overall, but when it comes to the community, when it came to the G1s, uh, if it was not for them, I would not be in the position where I am today. Um, and I knew that they would find the things that I had to say interesting uh, because they were an open-minded community. So find a community that you know is going to enjoy what you have to offer, and start from there. Avoid throwing your message into a, uh, your message in a bottle into a sea of bottles with messages in them. Um, that's something that Yahtzee said uh, a while back, and a good example of that would be IGN. If you go someplace that has hundreds of thousands of people on the message boards all the time, you're going to drown. Like, your, your, your post is going to drown in other people's posts. So, find a tight-knit community, but one, but one that isn't too terribly small, one that's not too terribly big. But the number one thing to watch out for is responsiveness, because uh, I posted on game trailers, IGN, no one cared. No one, barely anyone saw my show, and barely anyone cared about what I had to say. So, find that community. Using your audience and community. There are many skilled people who want to help, who are going to want to help your show. Find them. For me, my all my staff, none of them get paid. They they just straight up came up to me saying, "I want to be a part of this because I like what you're doing and the show has integrity." Um, and there are lots of people that, that, that will help you with that. If there's something you're not good at, if you're not good at drawing, if you're not good at arranging music, there are people out there that are, that will help you. you just got to reach out to them. Or, nine times out of ten, they'll reach out to you. That's what happened with me. My visuals guy, um, probably my, one of my most important staff members, he just came to me. And he came to me from YouTube, which is completely strange. Um, but find those people. They will help you. Offer exposure for help. Like I said before, I can't pay these people. But what I promise them is, I will put your name, your name in the credits. I will put you in my show page, and I will, I, I will plug you as much as I can. And nine times out of ten, that's enough for them. They just want that exposure because they're starting out too. Uh, be active. Go beyond just your show if you can, and it, it, it helps solidify your place in the community. For me, in ScrewAttack.com. I also wrote some nude art, uh, nude, news articles. <laughs> nude articles. Uh, I think I did talk about that once, but like for me, um, I would go to like um, four gamer, fourgamer.com, famitsu.net, I think, and these are Japanese gaming sites, and I'd be like, hey guys, check this out. <laughs> and so it went beyond my show, but it helped solidify myself in the community. If you can do that, if you can participate with other people's conversations, if you can uh, write additional things for them. It'll get your, it'll get your name out there more because more people who may not be in, may not have been interested in your show may have seen what you wrote or or something that you said and think I'm gonna go back and check out their show. 
Because that sounds really, it sounds like this person is smart and they know what they're talking about. And I don't even know if the camera can see me. <laughs> okay. Well, I tried to set it so it can be. Highlight your community um, to other communities. For me, I was saying, hey guys, check out Screw Attack. There's a lot of cool stuff there. And um, that helps get your name out even more. So uh, once you become a part of a community, tell other people about your community. The community you are in will love you more for it, and they will support you more for it. So it's all about give and take. Always answer questions and respond to comments. Um, I said that once before, do it. It may take some time, but seriously, it will help you. Uh, YouTube versus Blip. Um, I just want to talk really quick about the differences between these two. Um, YouTube.com in general gets you more exposure, but it's difficult to get revenue from. In fact, I've been advised by my buddy Matt Pat, who does this kind of analysis for a living, straight up said, YouTube isn't a good place to monetize. And it isn't. But it's a great place to get exposure. So if you're not too concerned about trying to make money off your show immediately, and I suggest you don't in the very beginning, YouTube is a great place to go. Um, it's going to be very difficult for people to find your content simply because of how much there is in all different kinds of genres, but it's a great place to get started. Um, Blip is much more comfortable with monetization. They aren't so much worried about copyright infringing, and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but no one knows about Blip. Uh, very few people know about Blip.tv, and that's unfortunate because their stuff's uh, really, really good. Um, there's a lot of really amazing producers. Um, but the monetization is good. The uh, RPM, or rates per million, which is how much money you make per 1,000 views, is three times higher than what you're going to find on YouTube. Um, and it's, it's easier to do. And they give you a really nice uh, view page, too. If you can just send a link to that, it's beautiful. Um, but again, not too many people know about Blip. Networking. The pros are much more comfortable talking to you than you think. I talked to Dan, Rental Floss, and Retro Rob of the Retro Hunters, getting advice about what do you, like, what do you guys think I should do? Should